hello again, everyone. Uh, nice to see you again. I hope you're all doing fine. And uh, it's time for a new fly. Uh, the last time, my last video, I tied a dirty banana. And in this video, we will tie the same pattern dirty banana because these flies I will use uh, early spring fishing and today we will tie one uh, as a sea trout samurai and uh, on this one from this second I chose to use uh, uh, fits tubing medium in gold so Let's cut that off in three centimeters. And then we cut the little angle like that. Put this on. And then I have a extra small fits tubing in black, which I will connect with a medium in gold that looks pretty good and i will use the olive thread again if i can find it there it is and tie these two together so now we'll tie a dirty banana sea trout samurai which i at least will be fishing a lot early season So I lock the two dimensions together with hard wraps. Stop about here because we will have some uh, mirage tinsel tied behind the thread. So just lock it in on my side as always. And then we make a few wraps towards the back I stop about there because I want around five millimeters for the for the hook and then we just lock it in with a few tight wraps and then cut away the waist and uh, we will use uh, uh, SSS braid, sealized silver as ribbing. And I go back to where I want it to start, which is about here. And then as a body, since it's a dirty banana sea trout samurai, I go with the nasty rusty again. So it's pretty simi similar to the fly we tied, the, the last film I made. And then we start with the Nasty Rusty, cover up the thread, make it a good overlap. And I will stop it about here because we would have dubbing before the wings and we will have dubbing after the wings. And here I have mixed uh, uh, regular dubbing, SSS dubbing in uh, Nasty Rusty with uh, uh, Alta Gold Glitz dubbing to get a good volume of the fly and to get this nice glittery strands to vibrate alongside the fly. Here don't put on as much dubbing as I will do in front of the wings later on. 
this is just to help to create the drop form that we're after. But on this fly, sea trout samurais, they're supposed to be as wide, as fluffy as I can, as I can get them. And then we start to spin the ribbing, the sea lice silver SSS braid, down to the size we are satisfied with. And then we make even symmetrical, as symmetrical as we can. Nice turns, because it looks better than when the, the turns are not evenly made. So that's just for me. And then we go back, fold it back and lock it in. And all we need to do now is to brush out the dubbing that we have tied in. And uh, don't be, don't be, have to brush it out so much. And then, as always, we pull and cut off so there aren't any strands that are long enough to tangle in the hook. And now we will start with the first wing. I won't be using any. Ah. You can take one. It's, they're supposed to be fluffy and wide, and so we we will use a ring neck pheasant dark yellow on this one also. But I need to find one that I'm happy with. And I think I have one here. This one will be good. There's a little brownish color on the tip of this as well. So let's oh it broke but I think that I can put it on anyways. This is just to get some fiber vibrating alongside the body in the water. So lock it in on my side. And the best thing about these, the original samurai and this fat sea trout samurai is that you don't have to be so thorough as on the flies that you don't end with a bunch of dubbing because the dubbing, dubbing cover, covers up all, all the ugliness. So, just tight turns. <laughs> oh, I'm tired. I'd worked an afternoon shift yesterday, so I got home around 12 o'clock, 12 a.m. or midnight, I think you say. So, and then I did not fall asleep directly, of course. But that doesn't matter because I have a day off today. So I thought that I would make a little fly tying film. And then we just lock it in with a few tight turns. Like that, and then I run my comb through the hackle to see that it's uh, evenly spread, symmetrically. I think it looks really good so far. So now it's time for the first wing. And this is uh, one of Dana Snoda's nice uh, hair with the black tips, same as we used on the ordinary dirty banana. So it's just to taper this a little bit. Pull in middle, 
fewer and fewer strands like this and this one I don't want too long because I will use two more wings on this fly but I want it wide so I grab a hole with my left hand press with my thumb to get it wide on top and then make a loose turn and pull down one two three four five and then I check so it comes down quite long on the sides like that and the same thing on the other side this is a really wide wing which it which is uh, what I'm looking for and make sure that the longest strands ends up in the middle that's why I can look at this from from the top and see how it looks so I pull away a few on this side because they were longer than the ones on this side. So now it's more even spread. And then we cut this off. And here we don't have to be so thorough as I said before because we will cover up this with dubbing. Which is one reason for me liking to tie sea trout samurais they were worked really well with uh, with a uh, hungry sea sea trouts also i have, have even caught salmon on them but I, I don't fish them so often for salmon as i do for the fat sea trouts sea trouts tend to be a lot hungrier in the river and then second wing also from Danes Nodas the one that has both uh, yellow strands and black strands mixed together so make a little taper on this one too and it's very important that this wing is longer than the first one and it is and it would do the same thing put it on top Grab it with your left index finger and thumb, left thumb of course, and then we do a loose turn, press it down a little bit, and then we do a loose turn with this also, and pull down, one, two, three, four, five tight turns. And then we check out, so it goes down equal amount on the both sides, I, I pull mine down the most of the people use their thumbnail like this but i don't i don't uh, like to have long nails it bothers me so i have come up with another way which is yeah equally good or doesn't matter it, it gets the job done and uh, i have done it so many years now so it's I don't even think about it but that looks really good in my eyes and then we cut away the, the waist the excess and now it's time for some nasty rusty angel hair and I will take quite a bit on this one little more than I usually does do because it's gonna be a spring fly so I want it to be seen one turn fold over try to spread them a little bit so it gets an even spread over the wings two three and that looks good a good spread and here I cut off I cut them off in different lengths as, as always and I save a few tips 
that are longer than the than the wing that's here because I want these to be seen under the next wing which may not make any difference at all when you when you fish but it's just something that I like to do with my flies and now we will tie on a third wing and that is a little bit brighter yellow make sure that you get a good taper on this too and this of course is to has to be longer than the first one first one and second one of course so we get longer and longer wings to get a good drop form and press it down a little bit and uh, a great tapering with a good tapering the fly swims and moves a lot better in the water and a little more down on the other side so I just pull it and a little more there we go now it lays in the middle this is a quite long if there's a few strands that I think are too long I just pull them out but as you can see now the tapering is according to me very good and it's a quite long fly and it's wide now it's time to make it more fluffy in the front to build up the uh, dubbing uh, dubbing head dubbing in front of the of the wings but first really important the jungle cock line them up make them the, the same length and then like Michael put the nail underneath pull a few times until the feather bends and then I tie in the first one on my side a few loose turns it looks pretty good a little up like that and then we do the same thing with the other feather of course and we hope that we can put it on the same spot on the opposite side and the same length it's pretty important how the jungle cock feathers ends up because if they're too off they can uh, make the fly swim on the side or spin or anything mm. I'll check the length from above that one is a little shorter so I'll just pull that a bit like this now they are the same length and there we go there we goes as a Swedish comedian says in Leif and Billy it's a series on on the TV he's not so good at English me neither but I'm a million times better than him <laughs> okay here we goes and then we put on glue 
to secure the wings and to secure the jungle cock. So we make the fly really durable. And here you can use a little more glue than, than you usually do because we will cover this with dubbing before we end it with a couple of rubber legs and a hackle. Uh, like that. We don't even have to wait for it to dry because it doesn't matter if the dubbing gets into the glue just makes it even more durable so here I start to turn as close to the wing as I can without bending the wing down or pressing the, the jungle cock feathers in. So here we take a pretty big amount of, of dubbing because the reason I started tying these flies from the first from the first time was that I was very l bad at making muddler heads. So instead of making muddler heads, I made uh, big dubbing heads like this. What the f So the fly got a very fat shape. because of the m amount of dubbing I put on. Now we just need a little more to get it to look a little better. Like that. We can pull this back. And then we tie a few turns in front. I think it looks pretty good. And now it's time to brush out this dubbing. And uh, on the Fredin Flies uh, fly tying tool, his uh, dubbing brush, uh, there are uh, small spikes, plastic spikes on the top too, which makes my job a lot easier when I'm getting the dubbing out like this because I don't destroy the hair or the jungle cocks or anything. I can dub brush the dubbing exactly where I want it to. And also it's easy to choose the amount that you want to brush out. Here we sit like nerds, like the fly fishing, fly tying nerds we are. But it's a great way to get through the winter. Tie some flies, try a few new patterns, try to tie something that you are bad at to get better. Uh, tying flies there we go and then I have a look from from the front to see that the uh, amount is pretty even I saw that I needed to brush out a little more here like that And now it's time for the rubber legs. The sea trout samurai has rubber legs because the sea trout seems to like the rubber legs. Uh, more than 
and the salmon. First, I tie in on my side with loose turns so we can uh, adjust them so they end up in the exact, almost exact position that we want them in. Like this. Just check so the fly is straight here. I need to pull this up a little bit, which is no problems because I didn't tie it in so hard. These down a bit. And then I grab a hold of the two on top. And then I take the two underneath first. First I grab the two underneath. So they get tied in underneath. And then I just hold everything back. And then I make a few loose turns. So we can adjust them further. Otherwise it would look like shit. But now I can put them exactly where I want them. And I think that that is good. And now I take a little hair clamp. Which we often use when we tie pike flies. Get that out of the way. And then instead of tying really tight turns. With the tying thread. I just put some glue on the thread to fixate the, the rubber legs. And now I also use loose turns because the glue will do the job. Like that. And then I make sure to release this directly. And have a look. And they sit good. So now yeah, as I was saying, uh, if I have, would have had this hair clamp sitting like this and waiting for the glue to dry and then take it away, uh, sometimes the glue gets the uh, rubber legs to sit uh, wrong. That's why you should let them loose directly after you have glued so you so you have a few seconds on you to adjust them. And now we will make the top rubber legs a little bit longer than the bottom rubber legs. Because we want them to be to be short enough to vibrate in the water. So I think this length for the under rubber legs on the under on the underside. On the on the let's just say on the belly of the fly. Because when the water hits these short ones they will vibrate. Frrr. If I had tied them really long, they just would have been lying alongside the fly like this and have no purpose at all. Yeah, that looks quite good. A dirty banana sea trout samurai. And now it's time for a hackle. And I will use the same hackle color as on the other dirty bananas. Which is a kind of dark olive color. And I will, I will. I want a big fluffy fat feather. But not too soft. So let's see what we can find. Here I have one. Which will work. Good. And here you don't have to be shy with the turns. Because we want it to be fat, fluffy and everything. We don't want this. Uh, I don't care about 
the translucency or anything on on these sea trout samurais it's the other way around the fish should see these flies easily and then I use as much as I can of this soft nice hen hackle cut a little triangle and tie it in just where the rubber legs are and here you have to check the rubber legs again when you've tied this in because they can get out of position and I sit pretty good I'm happy with that and then we take a little hackle pliers if I can get that loose and then we start to wind on this fluffy soft hen hackle from a giant soft patch and as close to the rubber legs as we can and as always we pull back the strands so we get all the strands on one side this could be can be a little bit tricky with the rubber legs but if we don't rush it usually it is just fine and the rubber legs we can adjust again after we have put on the hackle as you can see it's get gets rather fat and fluffy here in the front but we are after hungry sea trout chromers and I hope that they will take a bite out of this fly and then just attach the hackle stem five turns and then I take it and I pull it a little bit to get it even tighter like that and now it's time for my little comb I could have had this uh, comb for my my beautiful mustache as well <laughs> but uh, let's keep it on the fly and now we brush this really soft hackle so it gets an even spread around and I can see already now that the rubber legs has gotten out of place but it's just you just pull them back because it's it's just the hackle holding them them down. So now now the rubber legs sit where I want them again. Then we come through the wing. So you can see how fluffy and wide it is. And on this fly, I will choose a copper turbo tungsten cone head. I'm freezing my fingers because it's so cold in the garage where I have my little fly tying room and this is not super beautiful fly but uh, if you try to tie one and if you fish for sea trout when they're hungry I tell you it could be worth to try try this one I mostly tie these ones to fish in the dark and then I tie them all black like that now a little glue on the thread so we can secure the Turbo tungsten cone head. 
And now it's important that we wind these turns on top of each other and as close as possible to the soft hackle. But we don't want to use so much glue that the hackle sucks it up because it won't move as well if you get a little glue in the hackle. Oops, fell over again. But this glue is so is so old, so it's the viscosity of it, or I don't know if if it's ne called viscosity in Sweden. Is it's uh, viscositet? So I just took a chance that you say viscosity, but the thickness of it is really thick and slow running. So if I accidentally flip this one over. I have 10 seconds before the glue starts to run out. Now it looks a lot better when I put this one on, I think. This will all also help with a fat drop form. And this is, yeah, as you can see, it's really wide. Oh, there, that's camera. It's really wide and fluffy and fat. And the rubber legs sit really good, I think. Maybe it's hard to see in the camera, but if I grab it like this, you see two little longer ones on top and two of the shorter ones in the bottom because those will vibrate the most because these ones will mess with the wing but it won't swim bad it just it's just that the rubber legs on top there won't be as efficient in vibrating as the two on the bottom that's why i make the two on the bottom a little shorter so i'm certain that they don't just hang there dead by the fly by the side of the fly or under the fly and then I put it on on the opposite way just to be sure that there's a good hole if I want to use a thick leader and as you can see the um, uh, the hair from snow dust with the uh, dark tips here and then we have the hair with a both black and yellow strands and as a top wing I took a quite bright yellow on this one but as you can see it's a very dirty fly so dirty banana sea trout samurai and it's done and these are quite quick to tie and it they are easy to to tie as well because of the dubbing in front you don't have to be so thorough and and accurate because you cover everything up with a dubbing big lump of dubbing before attaching so here it is my sea trout samurai dirty banana which will swim in April in search for big fat ooh, chromey sea run browns. I'm not sure if the jungle cocks ended up perfect but whatever it's for me so I will fish it anyways and uh, thank you very much for watching my fingers starting to freeze so I'm gonna go in the house and uh, maybe have a cup of, of a hot uh, tea or a cup of coffee I think a cup of coffee because I'm a little tired I want to be awake a few more hours 
but uh, if you haven't tried the, the Sea Trout Samurais uh, versions, uh, I would be really interested in hearing what you have to say if you tie one and you can use any color combination that you want of course it's just the way of tying it to get it fluffy fat and bushy so it really vibrates and pulsates in the little slower currents where the sea trouts or the sea run browns uh, in the rivers uh, like to hang out in little slower bits uh, so yeah I'm done thanks a lot for watching and uh, if you want to follow my YouTube channel that would make me very happy so this one for follow and this one for a new little fly time film or an old one of course uh, thank you guys I will see you soon again and have a great day and let's hope for a super season 2024 fishing wise.